Hello everyone. Today we are talking about typography on the web and specifically how you can incorporate non-standard fonts in your websites. So this is a topic that we've been discussing essentially from day one. Um, and it falls under the you have way less control than you want to have um, aspect of working with web design. So since the very beginning of the semester, we have been talking about how there are some things that are outside of our control in terms of um, the way that our visitors might interact or um, the way that the site that you provide might behave once it gets to their device using their browser. And as just a quick rememory, um, the reason for this would be because people are going to be using different operating systems like Mac or PC and they're going to be using different browsers like Chrome or Edge or Firefox. Um, they might be using mobile browsers, they might be using a really large display or be working on a phone. So there are so many different variables that could come into um, effect and actually create challenges with um, having consistency between the different devices and browsers and operating systems. So we've been talking about this um, in terms of typography when we've looked at the font stack. So if you remember the font stacks, whenever you go to choose um, which typeface you would like your um, content to be showing as, you end up choosing a really long list of type options um, with the priority being on the very first one that has been listed, but then, you know, if they don't have that one on the user's computer, then they look to the next option and see if that's on the user's computer. If that's not there, then they keep going down the list until they ultimately end at the very last option, which would be just like a classification such as serif, sans serif, cursive, mono, etc. So that is been a little limiting for us in terms of the design quality and sensibility of your website. So today what we're looking at is um, the way that you can get non-standard typefaces, non-system fonts. So when our computers ship to us, we get a system set of system fonts. So what we're looking for now is how can we incorporate non-system fonts into our website so that we can improve the overall typography of the site. Um, type is an element of design, meaning that just like color or shape or line or format or texture, we can use it as a way to enhance um, the look and the meaning and the brand identity of our design products. Uh, and our websites are another design product. So we're going to go ahead today and I'm going to go through um, this page, which is the background lesson on typography for the web, specifically talking about non-standard fonts and how we can get them. We're going to be looking today at um, Google web fonts and also Adobe Edge web fonts. And then um, in a separate video, I will be creating a, a tutorial lesson for you. So I'll, I'll go over the tutorial for this so that you can see me applying and doing the process and then you will apply that to your own website. Okay, so moving down the page, uh, we will be completing a tutorial on the technique. It's going to be on the next posting over, so um, we will get there when we get there. So starting off with a little background information, um, clearly typography is critical to design and we have struggled with that in web historically, though things have gotten much better over the years and we now have access to a very broad um, sampling of type choices that you can use and also more robust CSS that can apply styles to your typography. So we won't be getting into any of that today, but that is something to look forward to if you plan to continue on using um, HTML and CSS for um, working with web design. What we're going to be looking at 
in here, though, are going to be a couple of different um, background information topics, uh, including methods for how you can get those um, font files to be active in your website. And also, we're going to be looking at the different services who will provide that resource to you. And we need to talk about the performance hit because working with fonts is just like adding extra assets to your website and they do count against the total load time for your website. And then we'll get into the tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up here into um, methods. So two different methods that we're gonna be talking about today. So one of them is that we can actually host the font files that we wish to use in our website by downloading those font files or buying those font files, putting them into a folder, potentially in our assets folder, and then uploading those to our server. We would then use some specific um, CSS declarations, specifically this one called the at font face declaration, to access the font files that are inside of our assets folder uploaded to the server so that we could then use them in our CSS. That's actually a method that we are not going to be looking at in this class, though it's something you could use um, if you were going to continue moving forward. Now why would you do that? Well, specifically I would say that you would do that if your client um, or if you as a designer have decided to purchase web fonts um, to use in a website so that you would have a more custom solution. And when I say custom, I mean that because we're going to be looking at a product which is Google Fonts and also another product which is Adobe Edge Fonts. Both of those services provide free fonts for people to use, which just means that they're less exclusive. So if you were working with somebody um, who had a very specific typeface that they use um, as part of their brand identity, and they had permission and you had permission to use that type, on their website, then you would likely need to add that particular type to your assets folder, upload it to the server, and then use the app font face declaration so that you can employ that very specific typeface. So we are not going to be going over that process, but instead what we are going to be going over is something called um, a content distribution network or a CDN. And we are going to be looking at two different options for that today. So talking about connecting to a font hosting service online um, means that we would be utilizing a service, in this case, one that is being run by Google and one that's being run by Adobe, in which they actually have um, font files loaded up on a server already, and we are just connecting our website to their website, and we will load the font files from their website. So instead of us downloading the files, putting them into our folder, then uploading them, which is like making a duplicate, right, duplicate of those font files, instead of doing that, we're just going to connect to their service, their content distribution network. We're going to say we want that font file to show up when our website loads, and then we're going to use um, a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS to connect ourselves. And then when we load our site onto a user's computer, or they load our site onto their computer, there will be a connection made to that font hosting service. We'll go and find those font files, make them available on the user's computer while they're on our website, and that's all we need to do. So it's a very simple process. We're going to take a look at um, both ways to do that today. So um, the CDN in here, these content distribution networks that I'm talking about, are being used more and more because they're efficient, right? So why do I need to upload font files and take up server space on my own machine um, or on my own server account when the people that I'm getting them from already have them online, right? So it's just an efficiency measure in here. And like I say, um, if you're worried about what happens if Google goes down or Adobe goes down and you can't reach those font files anymore, um, just keep in mind that if that happens, we have bigger fish to fry than whether or not your, your fonts are showing up, right? We need to be thinking about other, <laughs> what else is going on in the world if those things go down. 
Okay, so um, what we're going to be looking at next are uh, the different services that we're talking about today. So the first one is going to be the Adobe Edge fonts, which is going to be coming through Dreamweaver itself. And again, that's another font hosting service. Um, what's nice about using the Adobe Edge fonts is that if we're already using Adobe products and if we're using Dreamweaver to build our pages, then this is something that's built directly into Dreamweaver and we don't need to go anywhere else to get it. One of the things to know about using Adobe Edge fonts is that Adobe is going to generate a really small amount of JavaScript code that is um, the way that the browser will know to connect our websites with Adobe's font hosting service. So it works kind of like the connecting element, right? And when we go in and do this through Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver is going to automatically create this JavaScript and put it directly into the head, right? The head portion of our website or the web page that we're active on. Now, after we are connected to the font hosting service, then we still need to go into our CSS and add in those properties of font family and value and whatever the font name is in there so that we can actually apply the fonts to our designs. Now something very similar is going to happen when we get into the Google Web Fonts. Um, Google Web Fonts is going to work very similarly to this except for that instead of us being able to do this natively through Dreamweaver, we're going to have to go to the fonts.google.com website to go and find those fonts. We're going to get CSS code from Google for the fonts that we have selected. And so instead of using JavaScript to be the connector between our website and the font hosting service, we'll be using a link to an external style sheet. So in our websites right now, we'll have at least two style sheets. The style sheet that you are currently making to control the presentation of your website, plus a secondary external style sheet um, that Google will generate for us, okay? And so in both of these, um, they're, using, they're being used as connectors, right, to connect styles with our HTML. Um, I do have a little link in here in case you have any issues using Google Fonts for your website, so you can go ahead and take that, um, and you can use that if you need it. Now, the other thing that I just want to be really clear about in here is that we're using this right now in a one-page website, um, but you need to remember or just be alerted that if you have a multi-page website, like we did for Site 1, you would need to um, add either the JavaScript from Adobe Fonts or the link to the external style sheet from Google to the head of every HTML document to make sure that we are connecting the service with the HTML page. So in our examples, we're not gonna be doing that because we only have one page in the tutorial and one page in our own websites. So there will be more uh, reminders about that as we go forward. Okay, so last thing on the background information here is just about the performance hit. Just want to make sure that you have a heads up that loading font files is similar to loading graphic or image files and that they are considered to be assets that need to be loaded um, in order for the presentation to reflect what you want it to look like. And the issue with that is that the more fonts that we load and also font styles like book, bold, italic, light, ultralight, ultralight italic, uh, bold italic, all of those different styles that we might load up so that we can get variation in our typography, um, those are all going to count against our loading time. So they're going to count towards the weight and the load time for our web pages. So keep that in um, kind of the back of your mind here that we still want to be strategic about this. And I would say that loading more than probably about four different um, either fonts or font styles in there um, is going to start to tax the speed at which our sites actually load on users' computers. So you only want to pick what you are actually going to use because then fonts that you're not planning on using don't get loaded and we don't have to take the time for them to be loaded on a user's machine. So that's essentially what I'm covering in here. 
Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So again, we get, we're going to click next down here. This is the next button, or you could click directly on the link. Um, but let's go ahead and move through this sequentially.